so very good evening and welcome to physics for students my name is shonak and uh, i have taken a break today in terms of understanding tensors and mathematics and go something very very interesting something very very fascinating and something i think you are all going to enjoy uh, a different kind of an approach in terms of understanding general theory of relativity uh, most of the students and uh, people who are learning general relativity i think i think that they have a kind of a question in their mind that uh, what would be the right approach i am telling not in terms of books always but in terms of understanding how things would be what is the right approach how to take things forward from here and so on so in today's class what i would be doing is that i will try to give you a, a geometrical approach in terms of the best books in terms of the uh, concept building and in terms of understanding what is uh, i would say differential uh, general relativity in terms of understanding what we can uh, tell is uh, what is the first way to go ahead what are the problems that might ha happen and how to overcome the problems so this would be a different kind of an understanding i i hope that you can uh, you will enjoy it so stay tuned uh, till the end before that i would just like to make a quick very quick announcement to this wonderful lady she is coming dr sudeshna ganguly on sunday on this channel physics for students where she would be talking a lot about particle physics as you can see she is the assistant scientist not from any other institute but from fermi lab i don't need to explain what is fermi lab you understand and it would be 3rd of december starting 8 pm indian standard time and so those who are venturing into particle physics or wants to know more about particle physics building or planning to build their career in particle physics have concept related questions related to particle physics anti particles etc please be there and she is a wonderful lady she is a teacher and she is working in fermi lab for quite some years got a huge amount of experience in particle accelerator and she is doing a research on muon g2 experiment so i think that this would be a wonderful journey we both uh, we all can learn a lot from her so when we talk of particularly of learning general theory of relativity i would just like to talk for you for a few minutes and then like to show the slide the first thing is what happens to, to come in our mind is that general relativity is full of difficult mathematics absolutely no doubt on that nobody is doubting that it has got a lot of complex mathematics the question is that if you are starting to deal with the mathematics first then shall we spend around 3 4 5 6 7 years in learning tensor calculus partial differentials geodesics all those things or shall we take an approach that we learn this level of mathematics and then learn some portion of general relativity then we again take a, a small baby step and then we learn another general relativity i think this approach makes a better sense why it takes a better sense because if you take a huge amount of time and learning all those mathematics you might lose the interest in learning general relativity so this is a typically kind of an approach but again i would tell that rather than more learning the mathematics of general relativity let us explore in learning what is called the geometry of general relativity because in numerous occasions i have explained that it is more of geometry less of mathematics so here you see in this slide what i tried to show you is that shall we go from general theory of relativity to differential geometry or shall we first learn differential geometry and come back to general relativity so on the or the physics of general relativity so uh, what shall we do shall we master the concepts of curved surfaces shall we first learn tensor calculus shall you learn the mathematics of differential geometry is general relativity a theory of relativity which concept you shall learn first all those questions come because even if you are learning general uh, differential geometry remember it is a, it's a huge one is a huge subject it takes years there are specialists on only on differential geometry so that is a basically a question so if you see that in general when we talk about the concept differential geometry there are simple two terms differential and geometry obviously from the term differential you can understand that why we are trying to differentiate things that means we are using infinitesimal calculus etc in order to uh, let you know now here i would like to share my jam board and just try to explain you a few points which is not explained in my video and i think this this would be very important i hope this jam board is now visible to you and you can see it clearly and you see that when we we started with the general relativity we know all those things now when we are 
dealing with the i'm so sorry when we're dealing with a cartesian coordinate for example if i got something like this and if i take this to be space say for example and i take this temporal to be time then i can take another frame of reference and i can just tell that this person s s prime and this person is uh, the observer reference is t prime i mean to say say for example this this is one observer o and this is another observer o prime these are two frames of reference which i'm trying to trying to explain now we know that if i try to measure something over here say for example any kind any kind of a vector over v over here then if this person observes the same vector or the same i would say uh, event happening over here and i can call it as v prime o so what does it say the theory of special relativity says the laws of i'm so sorry the laws of physics are invariant in all frames of reference the laws of physics are invariant in all frames of reference that that is the basic idea that is how we actually found out special theory of relativity and that is what we are actually looking into it right now so the, the, the concept is that when we are trying to now we move this one as you know that we can go from this part of a flat space time to a kind of a say a uh, curved space time right we take a kind of a curved space time something like this uh, don't mind for my drawing i just to want to give you an idea so if i take a space time from here space and time and it moves into a continuum say for example space time itself i'm say this is a space time continuum where we have united space and time to space time continuum continuum that means space and time is now united into a single lump that is called a space time continuum although for measurement etc we need uh, space and time uh, separately so now you see if we can do the differentiation obviously in this kind of a line also uh, in flat space time but say for example here is something i want to show you that so for example here is a line which is going like something like this for example or this line which is moving something like this now in order to do that what we are doing is that we have to take that line separately out and then we do all those tiny 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 infinite simal differentiation and we apply the rules of calculus that is dy by dx so instead of this i think this one works better because it is curved and we can do the differentiation now in order to do this differentiation when we are moving from a flat space to a curved space we need something which is called the differential geometry because differential geometry will only allow us or rather the mathematics of differential geometry will allow us to do this kind of a differentiation in 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 terms of a curved surface in terms of a curved surface here so differential geometry will allow us doing the uh, differentiation so as you can understand right from here what it happens typically is that we use these terms as geometry why because because obviously uh, it is all about geometry so using calculus etc and here are, as i as you have seen it is a branch of mathematics will deals with some properties what are the properties derivatives local analysis tangent space connections etc so from here what we understand the first correct approach in understanding uh, general relativity is that we should, we have understood that we have to take the path of a differential geometry why because we are moving from flat space to a curved space why because the differentiation on a curved space using calculus becomes much easier this is what i am trying to tell that the question is that do we go from curved surface to the physics on which it is taking place or shall we first learn the physics of the curved surface and then we uh, come back to the surfaces i mean so the physics where it takes place this is the question as as you see i have given the tick one the green tick is that it is better to learn the curved surfaces first and then we go to the physics and in this entire lecture series maybe today or it can be divided into two parts also tomorrow i would be talking about the books the methods the approaches how you can easily learn the geometry of the curved surface vis-a-vis -vis the physics of different uh, general relativity so that you can learn them easily here you see this is something very unique this is what it is called we need to do the mathematics because we need to differentiate and in order to differentiate we need a calculus and this is very local in nature now here comes a very important point 
you will see it tells that gravity is a manifestation of space time which is very local in nature now does that mean that if i go far away in space the gravity will not happen no gravity is definitely going to happen gravity is still there space time curvature is there mass energy tensors everything is there but at the moment i am moving out of the way that means i am moving out then we are considering much more of a global structure of space time that means if i take the global structure of a particular place for example my room here then i have to consider that apart from that there are other areas which uh, we have to consider the temperature pressure or the curvature of something else in that case we cannot use differential geometry this is a very core concept of general relativity which uh, you need to understand now i will again try to use the jam board just to give you an idea now say for example if i take a frame of reference uh, th this is very important if i take a frame of reference for example i take this frame of reference and i take another frame of reference and i take a kind of a sphere say for example this is a nice sphere and i take the same sphere over here and i take an observer uh, say for example say uh, i mean to say it's <laughs> just to tell you that it is a different shape say for example this this would be an observer say for example i am taking this as an observer you see the, 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 these are two types of observer this this observer is waiting over here this is coming within the frame of reference let us remove this okay and this observer over here is somewhere distant quite located quite distant apart okay and what is what i am doing is that i am just walking down the path okay walking down a rainy sunday morning or sunday night so what i do is that i move from here to here and from here to here and from here to here and from here to here so i will just got this dots and this observer is observing within this frame of reference so what this observer will watch this observer will watch something which is called a very straight line or maybe it is a kind of a curve etc so they can watch x1 then it is going to x2 and so on the same thing which i am trying to do with a different kind of a color i will try to do the same thing over here and i will go to here i will go to here and i will come back here and i will go over here okay same thing which is happening now what is happening see the observer is located far away now this observer instead of watching things very locally over here to here to here to here to here this observer observed from a far away place so might be these straight lines doesn't appear to be a straight line because he is quite far off and maybe he's he or she is outside this earth so he will see some kind of a curve something like this and something like this and this is something like this and this is what in technical terms are called world lines these are called world lines this is this world lines actually comes into play in what is called that space uh, sorry that uh, uh, event uh, event cone where there is a present past and a future but the basic idea or to make you understand is that this observer who is watching these things over here will have a kind of a kind of a straight line or anything which moves over there and this will cause a kind of a stress on the surface of the earth i mean to say over here and this trail stress will ev eventually lead to what the curvature this would lead to curvature and this curvature is nothing but gravity as per einstein general relativity so this would give a kind of a curvature this curvature would be equal to the gravity now in in for the local person over here now the same thing will happen over here but here curvature this local curvature won't be equal will be equal to gravity why observing from far off there are many other extraneous factors happening around the globe temperature pressure stress strain etc many single things where it won't be equal to gravity because i have to consider many other things in order to take hold of the gravity and that is why we call this remember this very very famous that it is called gravity is a manifestation manifestation of the local stress stress uh, ten uh, gravity is a manifestation of the local i would say curvature or stress that is cause let me expand it a little bit more here it is 
that does not mean that there is no gravity or there is no curvature but what this person is seeing over here this is something very local and that is why here here the curvature becomes equal to gravity but here if i have to make curvature equal to gravity i have to consider all those curvatures around here because the observer is observing from a far away place and we know that uh, gravity is what is called a covariant laws of nature that means it would be same for all observers so that is why you know the concept of differential geometry becomes so very important that we need to consider those local curvature now if you see this part of the uh, you know understanding it will become easier that is why we need to study the local structure of space time etc and in this case for example this part of the world if i am standing out here and i need to understand the local structures etc then this differential geometry won't take place so what i need i need a different kind of a mathematics which is called topology what i need is a topology but for here what i need is dg i will just put it like this dg or differential geometry so that is why i'm trying to make things clear that why there is a need constantly for differential geometry understanding of differential geometry etc in order to first make a baby step towards understanding of generative and you see that most of my videos i was always tried to make differential geometry much more easier so here is uh, the equivalence principle which i hope i don't need to repeat that gravity is not a force and uh, it is basically the bending of the light is caused due to the uh, bending of the space time and the inertial force of uh, uh, inertial forces are equal to that because whatever the thrust that we are doing i i mean to say this nothing more to explain and this is a kind of a nice schematic diagram which shows the changes i mean to say from newton's straight law laws of motion how we move to the curvature and then we move into geodesics and space time is united into space time continuum and you see here that the entire mechanics is into einstein field equations and in order to know those we need cosmology black holes all those things i i mean to say this this actually emerged so here you see that every time we are trying to define general relativity it is always a curvature it is not a force there are curvature space time is a four dimensional fabric of the universe it has got a curved space time objects follow the curved uh, geodesics that means it evidently proves from all those understanding that we are basically going into what is called the curvature and uh, until and unless we understand or master at least some concepts of curvature it is going to be very difficult for all of us to understand differential uh, understand general relativity so i will skip this skip this part i think you have already seen it enough that it is basically a shift from special relativity study of simultaneity and relativity into what is called the study of geometry also as you have seen here that all those things length contraction time dilation i mean to say the effects of special relativity are basically a transition not much of relativity but more and more and more on more into geometry the essential concepts are all differential geometry now here i would like to take a make a note to you all of you that you see these tensors geodesics parallel transport riemann curvature and scalar curvature curvature tensors all these things that you can see on the right hand side this has absolutely nothing to do with physics it has absolutely nothing to do with relativity it has absolutely nothing to do with einstein it has nothing to do with physics these are pure mathematical concepts which were developed by tulio levi civita bernhard riemann marcel grossman and various other people so that means mathematics has developed itself in its own independent way physics has developed itself in its own independent way and whenever physics have failed that oh, okay i need certain things to uh, adjust certain things cannot be uh, taken from the local uh, from the euclidean geometry i have to go and fetch either an italian or a german or an indian whatsoever in order to understand that so i just wanted to make sure because most of the students they think that these are related to relativity no they are made to use in relativity to solve problems these are independent ideas anybody reading pure differential geometry or pure mathematics would get to know so what is the relationship that i mean to say i am constantly telling that you need to learn differential geometry etc uh, am i a fool i need to prove that right so here it is you see the entire edifice of general relativity is built on the framework of differential geometry and we will prove that in in the further lectures in today also so here you see now uh, i will again use my jambo to give you a very quick concept that means for example if i am taking a kind of a flat space time 
If I take a flat space time, anything like an X and Y axis, I'm not considering the Z, Z axis just to, uh, for the sake of simplicity. And if I take a vector around here, right, and I want to measure this vector, whatever, the length of the vector, the length from here to here, I can make an angle, I can rotate this vector over in this place, I can make this angle negative, whatever. Whatever I'm trying to do is to measure this kind of a measurement. And if I take a kind of an, again, a weird space, time curvature for example things around here i if i if, if i if, for the sake of drawing if i take a kind of a, another vector which is going in, in this particular line because remember these lines will all be curved it won't be this that means v over here won't be equal to the v prime over here because this is a straight line it's just a curved line now the question is that if the if there is a person who is standing over here and if a person who is standing over here how can I measure the distance? I cannot use Pythagoras theorem. How can I measure a line going over here and a line going over here? I mean, it's a curved line. How can I measure an angle? Trigonometry won't be able to do that. I mean, to say they would, but not by the usual way. So the concept of all those things, I mean, to say measurements in terms of these ideas that how I'm going to measure, how I'm going to take the lines, measurement, etc. All of these are basically done through what is called the metric tensor. Let me put it over here. Metric tensor, metric tensor actually measures the causal structure of space time. Metric tensor measures the causal structure of space time. Just like any other mathematics would do, metric tensor would measure the causal structure of space time. Similar to a line, length, area, parallelogram, angles, etc., this would do. And that is that that is being done by this metric tensor. And this is, you know, denoted by this G. Now, remember, this G is not the same gravitational acceleration G, right? So this G, or you can say a little bit, it is written in a little bit tilted manner. So it would be kind of a this G. Okay, so this G would measure everything around this curved space time. And that is what exactly it does. That is what it, it exactly does. Let me show you. I'm so sorry I didn't share the Jamboard. So here it is. So metric tensor measures the uh, causal structure of space time. To make simple things, causal structure means the angles, lengths, velocities, curves, lines, angles, movements, everything like that. And that is what this metric tensor does. It measures the causal structure of space time. And it carries that kind of a basis vectors. I don't understand space flight. If you can just uh, quickly tell me what is meant by basis. You are interested in the basis of the vectors? Praveen Chunarkar. Thanks, sir. Okay, Praveen. I hope you are enjoying the lecture. Right, Praveen. If you can just tell me yes or no. So, yes, the basis of the vectors would also change. If you are talking of the basis vectors uh, space flight, I think that, yes, the basis vectors would also change in kind of a uh, curved space time. So here you see that the entire thing for the metric tensor, etc., changing. And not only that, the geodesic equation, I think I've spoken quite a lot that it can be derived from Newton's second law using the Lagrangian, etc. That also comes into play. And everything is now being measured by Einstein's field equation. So here you see that the entire idea is building on differential geometry, nothing else. Nothing else. Physics would come much later. But first come the mathematics, differential geometry. Here you see, why do you need, I mean to say, you can just tell that Sean Aksar is just uh, talking rubbish. How would it happen that there is a relationship between differential geometry and relativity? You see here, to measure curvature, we need dg. To geodesic equation, we need differential geometry. For understanding manifold, we need differential geometry. For Ricci curvature tensor, we need differential geometry. For black holes, Kerr, Schwarzschild, Kerr, Kerr metric, Robertson Walker metric, we also need differential geometry. So, I mean to say, you can now understand that the mental shift and understanding is all in terms of differential geometry. And this actually shows you that how we are changing and what is the use. Why will we use metric tensor if we can use the normal Pythagoras' theorem to answer? And this also shows you that curvature of gravity is very local and not very something which is very global. So global would be done by topology and local will be done by differential geometry. And I also made you understand that why we need the differential geometry because this space-time continuum and those lines will be requiring in order to understand that.
Yes, I enjoy your videos. I go to library to watch your videos and learn generativity. You're absolutely welcome, Praveen. I'm so thankful that you watch my videos. So I have now started, Praveen, to take these direct classes because I thought that videos are okay. I will continue making videos, but this type of classes are more essential where you can ask questions and I can draw and show you. I hope you understand my point. In video, once it is recorded, it is recorded. And then you comment, then I have to put up a reply. It doesn't really make give that sense of teaching. I hope you can understand, Praveen. You can reply to me in the chat box. I really love to interact with all of you. Is this video or this lesson coming to use? You can just let me know, Praveen and Space Flight and others who are watching this. So now comes the very, very important question, which you might all be waiting for, that how will I study? Now, remember that for a different, for a kind of a general relativity, kind of a huge monster that we have to really attack, we need to strategize ourselves, get ready for the war, right? So in order to strategize, first of all, we understood that there is a need for differential geometry. There's a need for a book of differential geometry. And most importantly, now we will start with the sequence. Now, often it happens that if you don't have the sequence, you go in there and there and then come confused. Are you getting my point? So what would be the sequence of the study? Let us see. First would be that you need to have a very, very good understanding and a good understanding of what is called a manifold. Now, I, I would just quickly like to give you a small idea again why I'm talking of a manifold. Because if I take any kind of an equation, say, for example, any equation, I'm considering f equals to ma or the, the, the acceleration, etc., any kind of an equation, this type of an equation, in general, for a, uh, I would say for a, uh, uh, for a non-relativistic uh, way, it actually takes place on a flat space time. It would take place in this flat space time. Anything, this equation will result to happen any any part of the idea, right? Any anything we, we, which will take place over here. Now, when we are shifting, we are making what a shift. Let me show you this shift. Is there a <laughs> shift thing? I think there is one. Yeah. So here it is. We are going for a shift. We are going for a major shift. So I like it shift. Shift to what? Shift to a non-Euclidean geometry. Shift to a different kind of a mental setup and an understanding which is quite different from here. So you see, we see there is a shift. And this shift, what, uh, what is going to happen is there, we take a different kind of a, uh, area and we call it as a manifold. So let us say, for example, this kind of a surface and it carries this kind of a texture. Okay. So when, whenever we are trying to go over to here, I mean to say manifold, what it happens as I told you here, I've already shown you this part, this is actually what is called a manifold. This is actually called a manifold. Why I'm calling it as a manifold? That means it is a curvature. I'm so sorry, I cannot place it over here. Yeah, it is a curvature. It has got curves, etc. But locally, this particular observer, this particular observer, observer is finding this to be just local. Local means that means we can use calculus and if it is local that is why curvature is become equal to gravity. The moment we shift over here and we are to take this kind of an understanding of topology we cannot use calculus locally. So the, the basic understanding or the uh, idea of taking you through this one is this is what is important manifold. That means what? That any kind of a surface, this surface, here also the same thing is going to happen. Here also there will be an equation. Here also there will be physics happening. That means this equation now is going to take place over here instead of here. But this will be something very local, local manifestation, local curvatures so that we can understand and use Local equals to, uh, I'm so sorry, I'm just using these terminologies to make you understand. Local is equal to calculus. So this, this local area, manifold has actually got a very uh, technical, uh, I would say mathematical description. I'm not going into that. But manifold is something where we can apply the rules of calculus locally. And this would actually, I would say, shift. If I take a map around here, it will shift to a map which is called something very smooth. So we will come to that. What is a smooth manifold? What is a differential manifold? Anyway, so first what we understand. Sir, I'm a painter and international novelist, author of English, Live and Life. 
I would like to give you give to you a sketch. Yeah, absolutely welcome. You can give me a sketch. I would like to see your wonderful drawing. So you have my email ID. Please email or WhatsApp me. I would like to see that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Praveen. I would really eagerly wait for your, uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, painting because I have done a lot of uh, study in Botticelli and Michelangelo and etc. And I do read a lot of English novels. That is different side of me. I do I have done a translation from Urdu and Persian to English, a lot of literatures. Anyway, that would again take a lot of time to speak, but I would definitely wait for your sketch. Please do send it to my uh, uh, this one uh, WhatsApp number. I'm just uh, typing it over to you or you can even email me. I think I will be eagerly waiting for your sketch. Right. So uh, so, so from here, what we do is that uh, what, what is the book that you would select in Manifold? The first thing I would like to tell is this one. Okay. Now you might question me that uh, uh, smooth manifold, differential manifold, I will come to that later. But I will take manifold as a whole. I mean, I mean to say, let us study with smooth manifold. Differential manifold, we will come to that later. Now here is a book. This book is quite good. Okay. This is Loring W. Tews. It's very famous. It's Taiwanese Amer American mathematician. So this is a book which is called an introduction to manifolds. Uh, and there is another book, uh, which is this one, Introduction to Smooth Manifolds. This is also good by John Jack Marshall Lee. <laughs> okay, so both of these uh, things are good. Now, the good part about this book, you, you can see I have given it in highlight, the Introduction to Smooth Manifold, that this book is designed for a first-year graduate on a manifold theory for students who already have solid acquaintance with general topology, the fundamental group and covering spaces, as well as basic graduate linear algebra and analysis. The book is similar to philosophy and scope of the first volume of Spivak's classic text. Now, this is the problem. You also need to understand the problem. I will come one day to talk about how to select the right book. So here is the problem. That means this book is assuming that you need to know a little bit of topology, but it is, I have highlighted, try to keep the approach as concrete as possible with pictures and intuitive discussions, etc. That means that this book would require an understanding of topology. Now, let us assume you don't know topology because topology is something a little bit advanced, which is not taught in undergrad or grad classes. What to do? I would say, let us start with uh, introduction to manifolds. So that is why I put a tick on the left hand side of the book rather than on the right hand side because it's more mathematical in nature. So now you see the sequence. What is the sequence of the study? The physics of relativity primarily centers on inertial frame and constant velocity motion. And this is actually the transition. So the transition is from differential geometry back to general relativity. And it obviously deals with the intricate geometry. Now here comes the, uh, uh, you know, sequence. So I have, uh, you know, underlined those one, two, three, four, and so on, so that you can have a good understanding. First and first thing that you need to do is to have a basic understanding of what is a curvature? Now, I will show you that I have made separate videos only talking about curvature, only talking about the books, the best books available in curvature, etc. Then we should move to tangent spaces. I mean to say, uh, this is, uh, you can say these are concept building ideas. So first we learn the curvatures, then we go to tangent spaces. Automatically, once we are learning tangent spaces, you will see that we are learning geodesics. We are learning the geodesics. From the geodesics, we move to Riemannian metric. That is point number six. I'm so sorry. It would be third. Then we'd come to vector fields. I missed that part. Vector fields. Because tangent spaces, if I can, if I if I if I can just again use my uh, Jamboard to show you. So if I'm making the tangent spaces, whatever I mean to say, I'm not uh, taking up a specific vector space, but just taking a kind of a uh, tangent, tangent bundle, etc. So from here, automatically, the concept of vector field will emerge because tangent spaces ex itself is the concept of a bundle. So tangent places are automatically the concept of the bundle. So from here, you can automatically basically shift to vector fields. So you got the idea. I hope you are getting my point. So from there, you will automatically shift to vector fields. So here you see that first the curvature, that is the basic minimum. Then we move to tangent spaces, collection of tangents, etc. in a space. Then we move next to vector fields, obviously, because vector fields are basically a collection of um, all, all this. Then from vector fields, immediately we move to geodesics. Again, I will give you a basic understanding of this. 
why we are uh, taking this approach because from vector fields if i take a kind of a say for example these are the vector fields okay so if i taking it in a kind of a bundle then immediately from there we will try to make up the distance between two lines simple instead of taking a bundle i will now take a similarity i will take up the tangent between two lines so automatically this would lead to geodesics and don't uh, forget that geodesics before differential geometry was actually something which is done by isaac newton which i have already shown that to my video a kind of very easy mathematical idea that it is uh, are coming from Newton's second law. The same acceleration, the second derivative of time is coming from there. So we learned that the vector field first, and then we move to point number five, that is geodesics. That is the shortest path. We can find out all those details. From there, we move to Riemannian metric. Again, here is a basic concept. Let me explain it to you. Because if we have done with the geodesics, that is a straight line uh, from here. So now the question is that all these geodesics, etc., straight lines are happening. Those are fine. But on which surface it is happening? It is basically happening on a metric which is called a Riemannian metric. So there are different types of metric, Riemannian metric, pseudo-Riemannian metric, Schwarzschild metric. Metric means that is where actually things are happening, on which surface. So if I take a kind of a surface like this, okay, any kind of a weird surface like this, that means as I told you here, you see that the, these equations, these equations are taking place now where? It is taking place on this Riemannian metric, this Riemannian metric. So you, uh, do you agree with me that this is absolutely a wonderful uh, you know, sequence? Without the curvature, you won't be able to understand anything. So uh, without doubt, just go into curvatures. From there, move to tangent spaces, which is a very easy shift concept-wise. From the tangent spaces, obviously, if things are moving in tangent, we need to find out the shortest distance between two paths. That is called the geodesics, right? Uh, sorry, the, the vector fields. Uh, where, where the vectors are and from this bundle of vectors i take out something else okay yeah vishal is acknowledging yeah please keep on acknowledging to me yes or no or even you can tell me i don't agree with you i'm okay with that so from that vector field which is a bundle i'm going to geodesics and the moment i understand that geodesics are the shortest path between two lines the basic question that i might ask you that where are these lines happening on which particular surface you will say, sir, it is a Riemannian metric. Absolutely right. So you next move to what is called a Riemannian metric. And then from there, you move to the, I would I won't say a difficult, most difficult, but yes, a little bit, uh, you know, different kind of a concept, which is called differential forms. Differential form. That is why I kept it on the seventh part. Now, when you're learning this manifold, remember, you will also learn charts, atlases, you know, stereographic projection. These things will automatically come. Yes, yes, yes. Dhruva is always, you know, one step ahead. I really like that. Okay, so I will quickly rush because this lecture will continue tomorrow also uh, because this is quite interesting. I will show. So you got the understanding. So now you here you see you can go through these two videos on of mine. You can find it in differential geometry playlist. Oh, oh, what is the difference between various metrics? Yeah, again, a very good question. Well, Vishal, the difference between two metrics is the type of measurements and the assumptions that we do. Now, uh, <laughs> this would take some time. It's a very fascinating question. I would say, for example, if I if I if I take a kind of a, uh, a say, for example, a star. Okay, I will just quickly explain. Then I will come to Dhruba's because I have the hours limited. Uh, over here so that might create a kind of a problem so uh, say for example if i take a kind of a star over here okay i consider this to be a star or any massive body say for example let us take it as a black hole which is the most uh, wonderful thing to study so if i take a kind of a black hole over here and i take a same black hole over here i take a same black hole over here now i consider this black hole to be a schwarzschild black hole rs right that means what this black hole will have no charge uh, uh, symmetric i'm so sorry symmetric okay non rotating kind of a stuff right so this has got all these areas i mean to say this this is actually we are taking the assumption so these are the metrics now here i take a black hole which has charge rotating not uh sorry not spherically symmetric 
and things like that. I mean, it's all those naughty old things which we'll have. So what is happening is that this is not RS. This is something, say, whatever. It is not. So the metric that you are asking, Vishal, what is the reason of this metric is that this particular parameters will have a metric, which is called a Schwarzschild metric, typically taken in order to make theoretical understanding better. This will have a different kind of a metric because it has a charge. It has a rotation. That means it has got an angular momentum and it is not spherically symmetric. That means it might be, I mean to say, just let us take that this might be something like this. Are you getting my point? So these are the reasons for being spherically symmetric. Okay. So uh, the beginner's guide to manifold and fundamental concepts. And these are, uh, Vishal, uh, sorry, Dhruva answering to your questions. It's already 40 minutes. So how to conceptualize the difference in the FX between matrix? I will answer this question, Dhruva, tomorrow. Be there at 9 o'clock. I am definitely going to understand how to conceptualize the difference between these matrix. I'm coming to that. I will go for that. So Dhruva, because this will take time. So Dhruva, here you can see. I will talk again tomorrow about these books. What is the sequence of the study? What are the things that you should do? So one is there definitely the first one, not the first one. Okay, I will come to the sequence tomorrow because I have to again explain what is the content of the book, etc. Curve surfaces uh, by this uh, Marco Abbott and Francisco Tovena. Then comes the very good book, uh, Marvin J. Greenberg's Euclidean non Euclidean. Then again, an outstanding book uh, of foundations of Euclidean to non-Euclidean and World Out of Nothing by Jeremy Gray. World Out of Nothing is more or less of a historical development. So I will take a pause today and uh, I would like to tell you that tomorrow we would be talking because I want to take a little bit break for the tensors which I will be starting in December again. Uh, we will start with this. So tell me, uh, Dhruba and Vishal, those who are watching this, is it okay? I mean to say, is this lecture okay going fine? Is it helping you? Is it something new you're learning? I will wait for your answers because I never have done this kind of a, a live where I'm recommending books, make, making things concept, understand. So is it okay? Is it okay? Are you getting a kind of an idea? Okay, Vishal says, great. Dhruva, what is your opinion and others who are watching this? Praveen and uh, I don't know who all are there. Quickly tell me because I have to sign off. StreamYard gives around 20 hours. So I have to manage all those things between. And if anybody knows a little bit about what you called OBS, okay, please do let me know. Please educate me on that, how to do that. So do we need a master? Uh, no, no one really share book analysis. Okay, so Dubai, you're finding it good. Okay, do we master the entire mathematics of general relativity for cosmology? No, 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 no. That is what I'm saying, place flight. You really don't need to master entire thing. That is what I'm giving you approach one by one, one by one. Uh, the idea is that how do you approach what are the things that you learn in mathematics and you can draw a parallel to general relativity. Are you getting my point, space flight? My basic idea is to delve you into the mathematics, the best book, learn that part and then draw a parallel to general relativity so that both the things will be together. Most of the students, you will say, continue learning mathematics, 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 continuous and they get frustrated that this is not my cup of tea. But it should be both way so that both of them really actually uh, takes care. So uh, space flight, what do you think this type of a class is going okay? I mean to say, shall I continue with that or did a shift to tensor analysis or things like that? You can just put it in the comment. I will wait for that. Dhruba has already given a heads up. I think uh, you uh, acknowledge, you agree to this fact, Dhruba, right? That this is okay. So tomorrow, uh, if you want, then uh, I will start with the book part and then go a little bit of into Einstein's field equations and, uh, you know, make those things understand. And then again, on 1st of December, we can complete the tensor part, which we started. Right. So uh, please do let me know in the comment box. If you don't want to type right now, I will take a leave for all of, from all of you. I hope this is going well. And I will wait for the painters, um, you know, photograph to come. Praveen Chunarkar, I will wait for your painting. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, please do put up your comment and share amongst most of your friends. So that would be great. So, okay, so space flight says, yes, sir, continue. Fine. So I want to mix up, right? You know, from the pure mathematical hard part, sometimes a little bit of lighter discussion. Also, I will make another live exclusively talking about how to select the right book in mathematics or physics whatsoever, either in mathematics or physics. What are the parameters? What are the things you need to know? Vishal is saying thanks a lot. I will also like to thanks Vishal a lot and I will take a leave. Goodbye. I will see you tomorrow at 9 p.m. continuing with the same lecture at the same channel. Thank you very much.